So I decided to take a break from my uh, my travel videos for a little while because I think there's stuff more important that I need to talk about, you know, more personal things. And you know, some, a, a conclusion that I came to is that I really need to try to use my life experiences to help other people that may have that may have similar experiences. So uh, I, I decided to start doing this new series on uh, my relationship with mental illness. And not just my own mental illness, but the mental illness I grew up around. So I'm going to start off with, um, I think it would be more important to start off with the mental uh, illness that I experienced, you know, first chronologically, which would be um, my sister. And the best way to really talk about that would be to talk about her suicide and that happened in 2011, because it'll really bring up a lot of the issues. So let's go into the history of my, uh, my sister's mental illness. Uh, something I don't talk about a lot was when I was really young, uh, my sister... You see, it, that's the, the tricky part about being, you know, like physically abused by a sibling is that she was also a child. So, you know, it's really hard to really like vilify her because she, I mean, she was just a kid too. But between the ages of four and six, I'm not sure of the exact ages, uh, she used to, um, I remember it was just a blur of, of me just being afraid to be alone with her because she would just beat the shit out. And our uh, relationship was strained for many years. And um, at the age of 16, she had a, a nervous breakdown and was uh, diagnosed as bipolar, which was later changed, or I'm not sure if you'd say upgraded, but changed to uh, a diagnosis of schizoaffective disorder, which is the same as uh, as Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys. Uh, essentially, it's a mixture of bipolar with schizophrenic episodes. I believe for her, it was during her down times, her down episodes, she would uh, hear voices. You know, the thing is with mental illness, it really, it can really constrain a relationship and make it really difficult to have one. By the age of uh, 19, I decided, you know, I was the adult and I wanted to try to have an actual relationship with her. But at that point, she was too far gone. When I went home um, on leave, you know, vacation from the military um, in 2009, uh, I tried to reconnect with her, but she um, she was acting just like she did when, we, when you know, we were when I was in high school. So I had a girlfriend at the time and uh, she started an argument over pizza rolls. <laughs> I'll never forget that, like the most, the dumbest thing you can ever have an argument about. And uh, she said, cause you know, her, it was, her food money had paid for that. And you know, once that food money was gone, she had no money. But I explained to her that I didn't want her to talk to me about money. Cause I, I had given my family about $2,000 at that point. So, you know, I felt like I had kind of earned my way, but you know, that's a, that's a different story. And then, so in 2011, that's the year that everything changed. Um, I'm sure how hard this was going to be to talk about, but that's what's really uh, difficult about talking about my sister is uh, sometimes I just completely lose my composure and just can't say anything. But the months prior to May... Alright, I'll try this again. So the months leading up to May, my sister tried to reconnect with me. She, uh, she posted a bunch of pictures on Facebook and tagged me in them of when we were kids. But, you know, I was just too blinded by anger at that point, so, you know, I had no desire to connect with her. And I'll never forget because uh, Facebook was blocked on my ship. You um, you weren't allowed to get on there, but you know, you know, there's always a way to do what you want to do. So I got on Facebook and I, I saw a message from my mom that was, um, it was actually a week old and it said that something terrible had happened. So, so I rushed down. Uh, there was a space in my ship where, um, where you can make telephone calls. So I called her up and, um, she, uh, I remember she said it so calmly. She, uh, she told me my sister killed herself, and uh, then she uh, handed the phone over to my dad, and he explained a little bit more. And I remember I, I sat the phone down, and uh, and I just walked away, kind of feeling numb. And uh, there was a TV in the space, and uh, I just it was I just started crying, and I couldn't understand because our relationship was was never healthy, it was never good, but I was still sad. So I walked over, and my boss was sitting over there, one of my friends. And I said, my sister just killed herself. So they told me just to walk to the back of the shop and just, you know, do what I need to do. So, you know, so I cried for like five minutes, I think. Then my friend came back and asked if I was okay. I was like, fuck, you know, we never had a good relationship. And he said, man, that's family. That's how it goes. So they brought down the, you know, the, the ship's doctor and everyone was making sure I was okay. Uh, they took me off my the watch bill. I didn't have to do any work for like the, the two weeks before I went on emergency leave. I remember originally I wasn't even gonna leave, but then I went upstairs and started work doing some of my work and I'm like, I gotta get out of here. I just couldn't deal with it. You know, so I went home for two weeks. Um, actually, yeah, two weeks. I think it was three weeks actually. 
But after that, it was weird because because uh, I was when I was at home, we did a little service for her, and um, it was weird. I didn't feel sad at all. Like nothing. Like it didn't even affect me. Then when I was back in Yokosuka, when I because I, I was stationed in Yokosuka, Japan, I just felt really anxious. And they say you don't really deal with with issues until you feel comfortable. Like your mind decides when it really wants to deal with things. So I went to see a counselor, and, and I told her about everything. I told her about our relationship. And here's the hard part. <laughs> And she said to focus just one good memory. It could be anything. And I remembered a picture. Uh, it was a picture. It was a picture from when I was like four years old. And I think she was about 11. Yeah, she was seven years older than me. Uh, we were riding on a, on a lawnmower. I'm not sure what I missed more. If I missed her, if I missed my childhood. But, and I, I remember she asked me that and I just broke down instantly. It was the same whenever I was in rehab for alcohol. I say rehab. It's not as serious as people think. I, 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 mean, I, I just requested... I thought I was drinking too much, so I requested to go to a class. It wasn't like I was in the hospital. But anyway, it was the same. They, uh, they, uh, I forget what brought it up, but they asked me about my relationships. So I talked about my sister. And um, for some reason, it brought up a memory from when I was six years old. And uh, I saw her get arrested because she got arrested because of me. Or at least partly because of me because she was, you know, beating me up like I told you about. And I thought I was never going to see her again, you know. You're six years old. You don't know. You don't know what's going on. So, and what I really learned in all this, you know, because I guess for years I never really accepted that she actually was mentally ill. But, you know, there's there's bigger reasons behind that. But you know, that really showed me that you know, mental illness is real. It's it's not a joke, and it needs to be taken serious. And that's the big lesson, you know. You know schizophrenia and schizoaffective disorder are very real. If you know somebody that has them, if, you know, if a family member has them or has it, one of those two disorders, you know, take it serious. So this is just my first uh, video in this series. It's pretty hard to make it through it, but this is just the beginning. So it's probably going to be in about five or six parts. I'm going to talk about my, you know, my my own issues as well as you know just the relationships of people that I've had that have had mental illness that have had and how they have affected me. So that's it. So as always, if you like my music, buy it. If you like my video, subscribe. And if you hate me, tell everybody out.